Welcome to the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara and I invite you to a completely new world of possibilities. Welcome forward to this episode of the Consciousness Anywhere and Everywhere podcast. I am Shannon O'Hara and I am joined today by my favorite guest, my biggest inspiration, uh, probably the source of greatest support for myself and many, the magical, the mystical, the fabulous Gary Douglas. Thanks. That's such a nice sound. I don't think it's quite true, but it's nice. I don't even think I have words to describe the impact that you've had on my life. And I know that you've had on so many people's lives. And today I'm hoping to create a podcast for all of you guys listening that might just change the way that money, riches, wealth, having and receiving can show up in your lives. So Gary is the co-author of a book titled Right Riches for You. And you you co-authored you co-authored this book some years ago, but it was a class that you started facilitating frankly, when I was in my early twenties, like very early twenties, and now I'm in my early forties. So we're talking two decades ago. And you're not supposed to tell me that kind of stuff. because That (laughs) makes me realize how old I am. And I hate (laughs) understanding how old I am. It is such a trip. I don't want to know I'm old. It is such a trip to look at how long this, sometimes it's a trip to look at how long the path to consciousness, greatness, ease, joy, and glory can be. But it can be a long a long haul, but considering how we took 4 trillion years to get this fucked up, (laughs) the fact that we've managed to unfuck ourselves in 20 years is pretty damn good. So you facilitated this class called Right Riches for You when I was in my early 20s. And at that point in my life, I was a righteous hippie. I had dropped out of art college just to be free. And I was living in my van just because I wanted to. And kind of just floating a bit lost in the world. And you were doing this class at your house. And I was like, yeah, I'll go. Because that at that point, I didn't realize yet that how much I was seeking consciousness. I just sort of thought I just didn't want to be in pain anymore. But I was like, I'll just go to this class my dad's doing. You know, that was about the sum. That was the complexity of that decision for me. And well, you said, I think it's funny because you also loved money, but you kept acting like you didn't, which I thought was hysterically funny. Mm-hmm. Well, the first, so the first sentence in the Right Riches for You book, which by the way, this book titled Right Riches for You was the biggest contribution to putting me on a generative path with money. Yeah. So the first title of the book is, if you're like most people, you have many points of view about money that you're not even aware that you have. You know, that's what I was dealing with in my early 20s. A bunch of points of view that I wasn't even aware that I had that weren't even mine, that were totally dictating what was possible for me with money. Yeah. Well, they were they were also creating they were also creating what you couldn't have with money. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and most people don't realize that it's what they can have with money that are made, created by the points of view that they have that are creating the difficulties for them. Because how do you know you don't like something until you had it? <laughs> well, your logic is sound. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is sound. It does work. <laughs> so you said something to me in that first Right Riches for You class that changed the complete direction of my life. You know, you said, you were sort of addressing the whole class. You said, you know, do you love or hate money? And I wasn't really thinking about it. I wasn't really looking at it for myself. I wasn't really taking it seriously. And you said, what if money could be used to create, you know, you actually, I think you said money, what if you could use money to buy endangered rainforest? And that one question was the key to unlocking that I, that I could see for the first time that money could be utilized to create the kind of world I wanted to live in. And that was the beginning of my right riches journey. True. The so, thing is, you were someone who wanted to save the rainforest. You'd gone to a nice hippie school that uh, we put you in that was designed specifically to get you to 
to, you know, to look at saving the world and, you know, being more ecologically sound and all that kind of stuff. And you had that as a target in your life. Save the rainforest. Not only has, mm-hmm. was, yeah, it's like, well, not only was that a target, it was a, it, the trees, for example, for me is, is a direct connection to what enthuses me. But in yeah. this reality, loving trees is seldom seen as an economical advantage. Yeah, but I disagree with that. And I, I love trees. I just planted 20 new trees at our ranch. Ooh, exactly. Exactly. And you know, big ones. Exactly. And those That's trees are gonna, and those trees are now going to grow into the future, being a contribution in a way that, frankly, we can't live without. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not that we can't, we shouldn't live without. I mean, you could live without them because a whole lot of people do in cities, mm-hmm. but still plant the damn things even in the cities because they know something's not quite right. And the real thing about the right riches for you is knowing that something's not quite right. And necessarily knowing what it is that's not right, knowing that you need to change something. Mm-hmm in order to create something that will work for you. Exactly. Beautiful. And so I wanted to ask you, so you created this, basically, I would say that the right riches for you content, the curriculum content, philosophy and vision is um, (laughs) unique. And you created this off the tail end of having struggled through a ton of money stuff, a ton of money issues in your own life. So I was hoping you could talk a lot about, or talk a bit about how these, the tools of right riches for you came to be over the years. Well, partially it came to be because I was trying to satisfy others a lot. I thought that if I could make others happy, then they would be happy and they would be willing to allow themselves to have money. Mm probably wasn't really correct information. Oh yeah, it wasn't correct information. And it's like, I thought that people would always choose to have money if they knew they had the choice. But that's Wait, actually not true. I think we need to, you need to repeat that. <laughs> yeah. I thought people would always choose money if they realized they had the choice to choose money. I was somewhat startled to find out that's not the case. Right. Most people would rather spend money than have money. Mm. Mm. So why is that? I don't know why it is. I just know that it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's something, that's one of the, I think one of the great questions that you utilize in a lot of the money classes and courses and content that you have created over the years. I've heard you ask this or state this a lot, which is, would you rather have money or spend it? You know, which is yeah. a distinction. Cause you also, one of the, one of the primary cornerstones in the right riches book is the difference between having money and getting money. Yeah. Can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah. You know, it's like having money is the willingness to recognize that you will have enough in your life that you will never have to do without. Having money is knowing that you don't, the struggle is not something you'd rather have. Most people have the point of view, they'd rather struggle for money than have money. Struggling for money is a known product. It's a, it's a beginning, okay? And you, you know, it's like most of us were taught when we were very young to struggle for money to get it. Hey, to get money, it requires you to do X, Y, and Z, and it requires you to do A, B, and C, and and M, M, X, R, quad, 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 <laughs> go. You know, it's like it was just freaking crazy shit that yeah. we were taught to do, as though that's the creation of money. And 
you have to have this thing. And the, the one thing in the How to Become Money workbook that I put in there was you need to save 10% of everything that comes into your life. And when you save 10%, eventually there comes a point at which you have enough money that you no longer question, why don't I have money? Because you begin to have it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and it's a different amount for every person. It's not the same for any two people. You know, and it's like, I, I started taking some of my money and I invested it in antiques to have in my house. And now when I feel poverty stricken, I go around the house and go, okay, if I sold everything and half what I paid for it, how much money would I have? And when I get up to a hundred thousand dollars, I go, okay, I'm fine. Mm. Yeah. The hundred thousand dollars is my figure. A hundred thousand dollars is your magic number to take the stress off yeah. of. And uh, the, the distinction of having money versus getting money was a massive uh, contribution to me because I had been functioning from, it took me some time to actually get what that was and to make the choices that changed it. But, you know, I was always, always on the stressful edge of got to get the money to pay the rent, got to get the money to pay off the credit card debt, got to get, it was always this getting money. And then as soon as I got it, it was gone. But- that was not ever, you know, that was not ever your mother or your father's point of view, right? Right. No, that was a financial point of view that not I was wasn't that I was surrounded with, not just in my household, but frankly, it's a popular it's a popular behavior in society. It's a fun behavior because that's what drives people. That's what people, people go think. to work because that's what they have to do to take care of the rent, take care of the thing. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, I had had the experience of when I was younger, it's like I had, uh, I had roommates that worked at restaurants and I did too. And they would work at restaurants three days a week and then party for four. I would work at restaurants for five days a week and have two days off. But I've been taught you have to have a good work ethic. And so I went to do work ethic. It was interesting though, that I wondered why they only bothered to work three days because then they take all this time off and then they go, Oh God, I got to get my rent together. And they hustle like crazy to get their rent together. And then they quit working. I kept going, I don't understand this. Why wouldn't you have it easier, make it easier on yourself to not have to struggle to get money? Right. But they felt that struggling to get money was normal. But that point of view of why would you make it easier on yourself with money? <clears throat> I don't think I've heard that anywhere else besides from you ever anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I think you are correct. <laughs> so, you know, I'm really grateful because <clears throat> you proposed that as a reality. You're like, so when I started looking at what's the difference between getting money and having money, through your assistance, I was able to see that having money, I looked at it for myself and I was like, okay, so if I had money, what would that be like? Because I had no concept of it. It was foreign. So I asked that. Pretty much no. I don't think anybody does in reality. Mm. Mm. So, So yeah, I looked at that. It's like, if I had money, what would that be like? And I realized eventually for myself that it would be like not making myself crazy. It would, it was essentially like not, abusing myself with money. That was essentially what I realized for me, that would be like having, having money would be peaceful and I wouldn't abuse myself with the terror of not enough money. And when I got, made that connection in my own world, it completely repatterned my, my relationship with money. And I started that. I remember standing, I was, it was, this was a long time ago. This is when we were both living in Santa Barbara. This was long before the T-Bowl fires and the house that I was living in burned down. And I was standing in the kitchen of this house up in the mountains and I was cutting my vegetables and I had that awareness. Wow. Having money would be like totally not abusing myself and being crazy about money. And then I started to progressively step into the reality of having money, which the 10% thing that you mentioned a few minutes ago is a massive uh, key to actualizing that in a functional way. And I just want to emphasize that the 10% stuff that you talk about is also in the Right Riches. It's in the How to Become Money workbook and it's in the Right Riches workbook. 
And it was that first practical action I took to creating a life that I had money. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, and you now have money. You're a rich bitch now. I'm getting there. We're getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. Definitely getting there. So what are some of the other, what are some of the other places, spaces that the right riches for you tools? Here, let me, let me go through some well, of this. I, I mean, one of the things I realized is everybody's good at something. What you're good at can help you make money. Like I was good at, at antiques, but I didn't consider it anything except something that I just liked and enjoyed. And mm-hmm. I could see a good one as opposed to a bad one. Mm-hmm. I didn't think anything of it. I never thought about it as a way of making money, but I thought about it as a way of adding nice things to my life. And I wanted to have more nice things and I wanted to have more the senses of what people had that had money. And because I'd known people who had, you know, lots of money and they had, you know, they had some antiques and they had some, you know, pretty things and they lived in prettier houses. I realized I want that. I want to live like that. I don't want to live like this. Right. But the thing that I think is really unique about you is that you did that. Like you created it. You didn't find the excuses yeah. for what you couldn't. Well, I was amazed because I saw all the people who were doing that. And I, and I saw people who had a different point of view and a different way of dealing with things. And they were remarkable. Hmm. And what they knew, it's like you have a way to get riches from something you know, but you don't use it. Because nobody ever told you it was a way to make money. They just told it was something. Told you it was something you knew, you were aware of. You know, I've, I've met people who were healers, and it's like, and they have this amazing ability to do healing, but they don't consider that they have, you know, that they have this other aspect of how can I make money with this? That's exactly Most right. People don't go into the next step. You know, they don't go to the next step. <laughs> This is what I'm good at, but how can I make money with this? Right. It's interesting that you're saying that because I've noticed that a lot with people. And a lot a, a lot of times what I run into people with that, or I've seen a lot, is the thing where if they took money from it for it, if they earned money from it, it would cheapen or devalue the gift. The money is wrong. The money makes them a bad person. The money is a problem. Yeah, but- bad None of, none of that is their point of view. That's what they've been taught. Right. So there we go. Full circle. Most of you, most people, if you're like most people. Back to it again. You've got, you've got some points of view about money that you're not even aware that you have. Yeah. I mean, I, straight to the nerve, you know, you and I had a conversation yesterday that I would say was like a, um, a, a, a conversation that we've been having probably for about a year. <laughs> a year, but maybe it's even been even longer. So it's been a progressive conversation. And it came from that I am now the financial support for both of my biological parents and sort of having to saddle up to that over the years and kind of confront that that's what is occurring and that that is something I'm doing. And the, you know, something that's occurred now with my biological father, which you know, is he's asking me for money after not having no relationship with me for um, maybe my entire life and me going in the conflict it's about, like, yeah. He, he, he never needed you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. So, and, but that was the conflict. It was like, you know, it's like, well, he never loved me. He wasn't there for me in the way I wanted him to be there for me. It was, it, that relationship was toxic for me. Why should I have to give him money? Right. All these points of view, creating no peace around money for me. Right. So, but just saying no to him was also not giving me peace. So I really had to break through to like what I had to break through to something that would create more ease. So that, that's why this has taken a long time of working through these components and something that I finally got yesterday that is so liberating for me is that 
my husband kept saying to me, you have, you, will you pay one way or the other? And he meant you're either going to pay him with money or you're going to pay with, you know, feeling bad, being guilty, being angry. Guilt. Guilt when he died. I don't know what you mean. Well, it's like you feel guilty if he dies because you, you know, you could have kept him alive longer or something. So I was always trying to resist that, trying to, you know, keep him alive, save him, da 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 Frankly, because he never asked for it. He never received it. And whenever I tried to give it, he always rejected it. Um, Gee, what a surprise. Which, you know, so, but the thing that I got to that really set me free with that is that even if he couldn't receive me and he didn't yeah. desire me in his life, that, that that didn't make mean I wasn't a gift and that I'm not a gift and that I have always been trying to gift to him. Well, I think you're a gift, but then I'm an idiot. Well, that's why you saved my life and thank goodness that I got you as a dad at age four. <laughs> you know, it was, I was like, good trade. This is, this is this, you know, it's, it's really one of the smartest things I've ever done. But the, the key with the money for me was the thing that took the conflict off the money was that I'm a gift. I will always desire to be a gift. My caring is a gift. And just because somebody can't receive it or doesn't receive it in the way I want them to receive it doesn't mean that the gift is faulty. And somehow paying the money frees me up from having to try to weird? contribute. Say again? It's weird. Money, money, everybody always thinks that money is going to give them freedom. But giving people money is what gives you freedom. Not and I never, you to be frank, money. I never got that. So I never got it. I was like, why? My whole point of view is why do I have to pay? Right. That was the point of view that was sticking yeah. me. Why do I have to pay? And you said, and you finally said to me, you said, because you care. And I went, oh, yeah. I just got the value, the relevance and the strength of my caring. Yeah. And it's like, and you care in a way few people can. And that made the money irrelevant. It was the yeah. money, but what he can receive. See, yeah. You also care about you, so you allow yourself to receive money. Mm-hmm. You realize how many people who don't allow themselves to have money is because they can't receive that they can care about themselves enough to have money. Right. Yes, exactly. And that's what I was indicating a few minutes ago about when I realized that having money would be not torturing myself anymore. <laughs> I was yeah, like, yeah. I got to yeah, be kind It's so of- much fun to torture yourself. You know, if I was I know being... that. I know people who do that even to this day. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so it's an interesting conundrum because I've, it's an, I, I, I'm so grateful for the tools of right riches, the other tools of access consciousness that have been extremely effective in, frankly, giving me a life of ease, joy, and glory, assisting me in creating cool. a life of ease, joy, and glory. And it's an interesting place for people to step into. And I've, I've noticed a lot with money classes that people think they have a money problem. They come wanting to solve their money issues. But as soon as you start addressing the energetics of what's actually creating the money stuff, it becomes a very different narrative, which is that it's a receiving problem. Yep. So, I mean, it's a, it's a different life and it's a different... <laughs> It's such a different reality and point of view of that money isn't the issue. <laughs> and really, I am so grateful because yeah. the first person you kept asking me, if money wasn't the problem, what would you choose? And that has been my great, that question has been my greatest ally in getting me off the like distraction and financial obsession of what I, why I can't and that I can't and into the choice that does create. Yeah. Well, I was, Inter- you know, it was interesting to me today that I had a session with a lady and she was talking about her money situation and stuff. I went, okay, so is this really true or is this what you're making true? And I said, yeah, it's like, you will have money problems until your parents die. 
and then they will leave all their money to your brother because he has problems. You will not have bad enough problems to get their money. That's like you got to pay either way. Money, you got to. Got to pay. Right. Pretty much the way you're going to do it. You can pay either way. So it's really interesting because that's a different dynamic of suffering for money, like suffering to get the money. Yes. She was suffering by having a pathetic life because she couldn't have the money. That's something I actually have. um, My husband did something when I first met him. The way he could get money from his family was to be like in pain and suffering, dying. I'm pathetic. I'm pathetic. I need money. Yeah, exactly. Which is a method of getting money, getting money, getting money. Getting money, not having. Exactly. It's not a, that is not a method for having money. Um, No. Versus the receiving that you've yeah. really uh, presented as a practical method for... Well, it is practical. Yeah. It's pr- pragmatic. If you receive and you don't shove anything away, all possibilities open up and come to you at the oddest times in the oddest ways. Which totally makes sense, but to actually get to that space of not shoving everything away, as you actually put it, seems to be a massive undertaking. It is for most people. Because, like this lady, they would rather be pathetic because that's what they get rewarded for. And, you know, so, and they don't show up in their own lives. It's like, if you're going to receive, you're going to have to show up in your life and receive whatever comes your way. Who and what comes your way? And take it and run. And take it and not run. And take <laughs> it and take it. And start enjoying it. Enjoy your life. And have joy with your life instead of suffering to get ahead. And yes, exactly. And how beautiful. And I just want to go on record as say, stating thank you for formalizing and organizing the tools, methods, and means to actually get to that possibility, which is yeah. written about in Abundance and the Right Riches for You book, in the Advanced How to Become Money book that you, many of you've, you've, you've written and produced several money books, but you've also facilitated and created many, many money classes. And I've learned how to be a happy, conscious multimillionaire from all of that. And you know what's horrible? What? I've tried to teach it to everybody and only a few people like you have actually taken it. Well, so this is, this is my, this is the challenge I'm putting out to everybody out there listening. Okay. What it's like, what would you truly, what would you truly like to have? What can you receive? What will you receive? Do you really want to do you, really want to choose what will create yeah i mean i thought it was funny because one of the things i thought i wanted to create was a really nice car now i have five really nice cars (laughs) yeah you five cars you overshot your mark i do that a lot when i get really intent on asking for something all of a sudden it's like avalanching into my life yes exactly And the thing is, when you have the willingness to receive everything that comes your way, that's great. It's like great stuff comes to you all the time. You go, how the hell did that get here? Or just did. So one of the ways to start to access that avalanche of receiving is to become aware of the points of view you have. And so that's what Right Riches for you ultimately is and does and can be for those of you guys who really want to change the foundation of your reality to have better access to what's possible for you. That's one of the most important things you said. Willingness to change anything to have more of what you like. That's brilliant. But you have to choose it. Exactly. 
So if you would like to choose it, if you'd like to find out more, I'm going to link the Right Riches for You book in the show notes on shannon-ohara.com backslash podcast. Um, wherever you're listening to this podcast, you can go to my website, go to the podcasts, find the show notes, full of resources. I am facilitating my very first Right Riches for You class this month in March. Cool. So well, I've been doing, I've done on and off money classes over the years because frankly, I love the topic of money. It's like I could basically only talk about money. It's my, it's my most favorite topic. Um, and I've, and I've have facilitated money classes and stuff, but I realized it's all the tools of right rich for you that I learned from you. Well, you know, what's really funny. You as a little girl loved money. And that's true. I mean, I was literally. I had always found ways. Well, that's exactly right. On the weekend, you know, when kids were playing, I was figuring out my businesses, my weekend businesses. And I to this day find the greatest joy in playing with money. Yes, you like to play at business. Exactly. Join me, you know, it's like, join me for Right Riches for You now or in the future or check out the book or check out any of the other money resources that we have in access. They'll all be linked in the show notes. There's so much that's possible for those of you guys that know that something is possible and are willing to change. Cool. Thank you, Shannon. Oh, thank you. Anything else to add? Any little, any, any other any other morsels of wisdom before we go? Hey, you were smarter than you knew even when you were little. So what is each and every one of your financial geniuses that you've never acknowledged? Yes. And I wonder how many financial geniuses each person has. Brilliant. 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 Can't wait to play with you all. Thanks, y'all. Thank you for listening to this show. My target is to make consciousness easy to find and choose. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a five-star review on iTunes and share this with somebody who you know who might be looking for more consciousness in their life. You can visit me on shannon-ohara.com or talktotheentities.com. And to learn more about the amazing tools of Access Consciousness, you can visit accessconsciousness.com and be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Thank you.